Hi everyone and welcome to Dennis Deep Cuts, the 49th installment of this fine YouTube series. Today we're going to talk about the best records of 2023. Let's see what happens. So 2023 has been a fantastic year for music. Um, I bought more records this year than in a very, very, very long time. Um, and today I'm going to give you the list of the best albums of 2023. A couple of caveats before we head into it. Uh, the first one, of course, is that uh, these are only albums in my collection. If I didn't buy it, if you didn't send it to me, there's no way it's going to make the list, uh, which means that this list will probably change over time. And uh, if I go back to the list that I did last year, it is now very different from that list. Um, so that's just part of what, what this channel is all about, my record collection, basically. Um, the second caveat is that uh, as I was going through all these records that I bought, there's so many of them. There's so many good records. And in the back of my head, I had this idea that I wanted to do another episode about how great punk and hardcore is at the moment. And then I figured, why not just do a list of the best 10 best punk and hardcore albums of 2023. So I will do that. And that's going to be the next episode. So if you want to know about the great punk and hardcore records of this year, there are so many of them, you'll have to wait for another two weeks. So before we dive into the list, I want to show you what I've done in 2023. It's been a pretty good year for me as far as putting out records. Um, thank you so much if you took the time to check out some of the music that I've done uh, lately. It really means a lot to me and uh, thank you for following me on this YouTube channel and checking out my adventures with my record collection. Uh, it's really nice of you and do tell your friends. Um, Invasion put out two records this year. We put an EP called How Far Have We Fallen, uh, which is like uh, the little sister of Let the Night Love You. And then last year as we were touring, we recorded a live record in Hamburg, Live at Clouds Hill that came out in October. It's pretty awesome. Uh, speaking of people in Invasion, Sarah and me, we have a punk band called Venice Casino. We finally put out our first record called Venice Casino. It came out on vinyl this summer. Uh, no streaming, nothing digital. Um, if you want to hear it on those type of services, it is up now for two more weeks. And then we're going to remove it from streaming. And then you'll have to buy the reissue that comes out early next year of this uh, fantastic record. And speaking of punk, uh, Fake Names, the coolest group of all time, <laughs> possibly. Uh, we put out our second album, Expendables, in the spring of 2023. And did some touring, and hopefully we can do some more touring next year. I would love to. And last but not least, uh, the Refused Samurai Project, the, the songs that we did for the cyberpunk game, is finally out as an EP. Samurai Wake the Fuck Up. Uh, it's a part of this cyberpunk box set. I'm not sure that this EP will be released on its own. Who knows? Hopefully, maybe. So check that out. Refuse did a couple of songs for, uh, for the cyberpunk game as fictional band Samurai. Yeah, it's a pretty good year. So, but let's dive into the list. First, a couple of honorable mentions. Tenth place, we have Nick Cave, Warren Ellis, Australian Carnage, live album from their latest tour. Um, I'm not opposed to live records, actually, a live album was the best album of the year, last year. Nick Cave, of course, I love Nick Cave, and he has had such a massive resurgence in his career the last couple of years, that's quite fascinating. And um, I got the record, I listened to it, I was like, oh, it's a cool record. It has some really nice versions of, of the last couple of records that they, they did. And I was like, it's super cool. And then I was going into town and I put it on on my streaming service. Don't like streaming services, but I put it on, driving. And it turns out the, the eight song LP on streaming is 18 songs. 
and it's a vastly different experience. Um, you know, there, it, it's like an expanded universe, you know, and uh, while this is great, there's a fantastic version. I, I like the inclusion of Breathless, Waiting for You sounds marvelous, Ghostine is great, uh, Carnage sounds, sounds great. Um, but when you get the 18 songs, you also get the in-between song banter. And Cave is in rare form. He's funny. He's heartful. He's really, you know, letting people be part of this. And um, it's just wonderful. And it is a shame that this is just like, oh, it's eight songs. Maybe the eight best songs. Who knows? Um, but it is a shame that you can't get the full sense of the show. Uh, it's not often that I recommend people to go and check out a streamed version of an album, but I will actually do that. There's also a wonderful, wonderful little uh, cover of a Cosmic Dance by T-Rex on, uh, on the streaming platform, which I would have loved to have on my vinyl version. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is fantastic, but um, it is a weird uh, case of the, 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 the streaming version actually being more rich and it has more depth and it's much more fun. In ninth place, we have my favorite Anatolian psychedelic rock band, Altingun. Uh, these Dutch people, it's their fourth album, and um, I've talked about it before, but I have a real soft spot for that Turkish psychedelia rock. And, um, it's having a bit of a resurgence with the wonderful artists such as Gay so Akiol and La La La. That was so close to making the list. They might be on like number 11 or something like that. Uh, Aldegan, it's their fourth album. I think all their albums are fantastic. And this one's a bit different because it's a cover record. It's like traditionals. Um, usually cover records for me is like, you know, get out of the contract or, you know, your, your, creativ your creativity is run dry. So let's, let's record some covers. Um, all these songs are traditionals. So I haven't heard any of these songs before. So it is like getting just a brand new Alton Gun record. Um, I think it's pretty fantastic. The, the, you know, the playing is great. The production is super good. It sounds like this perfect mix of like sounding like old, but still kind of new and fresh. Um, and yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm not even going to mention songs because they're all in Turkish and I, wanna, I don't want to butcher that. I must say, however, that uh, their latest record before this, I enjoyed a little bit more because it has different texture to it and it was more synth heavy and it just felt a bit more modern. Uh, that being said, all four Altingan records are worth checking out. And um, yeah, this, this whole scene of, uh, of Turkish Anatolian psychedelic rock music is, uh, yeah, it's fabulous. A reoccurring theme on, on this year's list is that uh, a lot of these artists and musicians have been around for a long time. And in 2023, they put out a great record. And that's both inspiring and, and hopeful that you can have a long career, keep putting out great music and keep being creative. And one of those artists is one of my Swedish, uh, the one of the Swedish favorite singer songwriters, Kristen Schellwander with his latest record, Hold Your Love Still. Kristen was in a band called Loose Goats in the 90s that refused uh, toured with a little bit, um, like indie rock band. And then he went on to become a solo artist, uh, like focusing on like Americana type of, type of rock and um, the last couple of years has been on a creative hot streak. Uh, I think 2018, 18, he put out the record Wild Humans and it's one of my favorite Swedish records of all time. He did a collaboration with a band called Tunbruket to put out some records on the moniker of Doom Country and that's exactly what it sounds like. Super heavy, Americana, dark, fucking fantastic. and. Um, his latest record is not that heavy and it's not that, uh, you know, it's not that heavy basically. It's still dark and it's, it's a slow burn, slow build. Uh, his voice is beautiful. Um, there's a couple of songs like uh, Disgust for the Poor, which is a bit more upbeat, but it's probably my favorite song on the record. And um, it, it, all in all, it's a super solid album about 
love relationships, the ocean, and uh, just, just trying to be human. Um, yeah, I think check out anything that he's put out in the last like eight years. It's just, uh, just uh, magic. On seventh place, we have a band that's been doing this for a very, very long time. I'm, of course, talking about the Swans uh, with their 16th studio album, The Beggar. Um, Swans been around since 1982, maybe something like that. Broke up in 97. Then in 2010, Michael Jira, who is in effect Swans, uh, put the band back together and they had a consistent lineup for, I guess, like nine years and they put out some truly amazing records and then um, a couple of years ago he decided that was enough of that and now Swans is Michael Gira with some you know people helping out basically and um, but leaving meaning a couple of years back and then the beggar came out this year is a pretty amazing record if you know anything about the Swans and the later output you know what to expect long pummeling hypnotic repetitive songs uh, instrumentation is sparse and violent at the same time which is like a big weird contradiction and it's all sort of like um, with Michael Gira's like hypnotic chanting voice on top of it um, it is quite an adventurous record I mean it does sound like the swans but you have a song like uh, Los Angeles City of Death it's like three and a half minutes in in the context of the swans it feels like a 30 second punk song and then um, as a download code, you have the Beggar Lover, which is 44 minutes, and the contrast is quite amazing. Um, Paradise is Mine, it's one of my favorite tracks of the record. But uh, if you like the Swans, you, you like this record, it's just, it is, it is amazing. And uh, it's not music for everyone, it's very, um, you need patience to dive into this music and it's not something that you just put on in the background you actually need to dive into it and let yourself be immersed by uh, another fantastic swans record so another artist that i've been obsessed with for the last say 10 years and she's had a incredibly prolific output in the last couple of years uh, in 2021 she put out two full-length albums 2022 she put out an album of poetry and 2023 she put out the double album there's a tunnel on their ocean boulevard did you know that there's a tunnel on the ocean boulevard with Lana Del Rey um, it's one of those sprawling double albums with uh, there's a lot of stuff going on um, the instrumentation is quite sparse it's a lot of just piano vocals but there are also a bunch of interludes and there's a bunch of more, uh, let's say, experimental stuff. Um, Norman fucking Rockwell from 2018 as well, I think is one of my top 10 records of the past 10 years. Um, I was like a high point in her career, but I think this record is, is really, really great. It's just kind of consistently fantastic. Um, and as I said, a bit more experimental. I think there's something for me i know that all her songs are about la and the, like the cd on the belly and like it's like almost in my opinion like american gothic uh, tales and stories and um the sadness and the melancholy in the music uh, really resonates with me living in an isolated part in the north of sweden uh, there's something about that beautiful sadness that just strikes a chord with me and um I am truly fascinated by Lana Del Rey, and I think that she doesn't really have a weak record in her catalog. Um, but yeah, I could not recommend this enough. And the song, Did You Know That There's a Tunnel on the Ocean Boulevard, might be one of the best songs of 2023. Fifth place, their 15th album, The Pesh Mode, Memento Mori. Um, old music well old musicians putting out new music that is fantastic a little bit of the theme of this list um i think this is one of the pesh mode's best records in a very very long time it's of course the first one without andrew fletcher um he didn't write the songs and he of course didn't, didn't sing 
but he seemed like an important part of what made the Peshmo what, what they were. And um, uh, the sadness of his departure is so transparent in all of the record. Um, on almost every song, there's references to, to, you know, longing or missing or whatever it is. And there's, this record is beautiful and there's a beautiful sadness over it. It just goes through all the tracks. Um, and, and it's just, it's beautiful. Dave Gaughan's voice is perfect. And uh, songs like Wagging Tongues and of course the, the first single, Ghosts Again, are just some of, some of my favorite Depeche Mode songs in the last like 15 years. But you also have Soul With Me when Martin Gore gets to sing his one song and his voice is just beautiful. And I, I, when I saw them live um, this year and, and Martin Gore did his two songs, it was just wonderful. Um, it's a solid, amazing record. And, uh, you know, inspiring that through adversity, they managed to put out a really, really beautiful, beautiful record. And I could not recommend it enough. Let's leave, uh, let's leave old folks putting out new records behind for a second and dig into a debut album. Fourth place, we have Blue Lit with our fantastic record, Death Mother. Um, I'm slightly biased on this pick because my wife sings in Blue Lit. Um, nonetheless, they are a magnificent band. Um, they started a couple of years back. It's like a instrumental band and then my wife joined and they put out an EP in 2021 called Visions and uh, they put out their debut album this year, Death Mother. It's great. They lumped into like post metal scene a little bit because they've been playing shows with Cult of Luna and The Ocean. I think they're more like noise rock. Uh, the songs are very long and they feel loose even though you could tell that they're very structured but they, they feel loose and they have a really hypnotic flowing vibe to them. Um, the song The Hour and, and the almost ballady track Lead Me Home are probably my favorite tracks on the record. There's only five tracks on the record so that's uh, half of the record. Um, but yeah, check out Blue that they're, they're extraordinarily great and my wife is way more talented than I am. Another theme that I discovered while we're actually, well I'm actually filming this is the fact that um, a couple of these records are bands that might in fact just be one person or two people and one of those examples is of course uh, Crime and the City Solution with their new album the killer. Uh, Crime and City Solution started actually in Australia in the late 70s, but um, the version that people know about, of course, uh, you know, it took shape in the mid 80s in, in London and the Berlin. Half of the birthday party was in the band, and you know, they, they sort of took over that uh, the mantle of like noisy, bluesy, loosely structured madness, and um, you know. They straightened themselves out as the years went by. In 1991, they broke up. And in 2010, they did a remarkable uh, comeback record called American Twilight. To the people from Ein Stutz and the Neubauten and then 16 Hor Horsepower and some other people joined uh, Simon Bonney, which is like the only constant through all of these uh, different lineup changes. Um, and then 10 years went by and then the killer came out and seven songs um, and it, it is one like Crime and City Solutions early stuff is uh, quite chaotic and it feels loose in the sense that it feels like it's uh, almost about to like fall apart um, so you have that element a little bit on this record which which American Twilight didn't really have that was more of a rock record and uh, when Crime and City Solution broke up Simon Bonney went and did uh, a couple of Americana records, uh, solo records that are yeah, fucking great, underrated. So it's a little bit of a mix of that. It's like, I said, touch of Amer Americana feel to it, but it has some of that looseness and the weirdness of, of, of Crime and City Solution. Of course, not at all as, as violent or uh, crazy as the early stuff, but this is a really weird and cool and marvelous record. And Simon Bonney's voice is one of my favorite singing voices of all time. He's got this sweet, haunting, 
sort of a tone to it. And um, I mean, Kramer's solution, I would recommend almost everything, but it's all very different. I mean, the, the going from, from Room of Fire and the early stuff to this is, is like, I mean, the, it's been a, it's a pretty, pretty impressive journey. Uh, yeah, third place, Crime and the City Solution, The Killer. Second place, um, one of my favorite contemporary bands. And I've been lucky enough to see live a couple of times. And I just really, really love them. I'm talking about the Chilean outfit, Philoxoid, with their fifth record called Five. Uh, Philoxoid is like a weird mix of like space rock, crot rock, and electronica. Um, it's a double LP, and uh, I think it's like one song per per side, and um, it's hypnotic in the best sense of the word. It's instrumental, and it just it's just music that keeps flowing and pushing, and uh, you need to immerse yourself into it. Sort of, you know, just get lost in in the kick drum that it is. Um, yeah, they're just truly spectacular. I love all the records, but I think this might be their finest hour. Um, I think maybe the BPM is the same on all the tracks. I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, when I saw them live last time, they played for two hours, and it's just like this constant kick drum that just goes for two hours, and then there's just soundscapes and uh, some delay pedals, and um, yeah, they're magnificent. Uh, Chilean psychedelic crowd space madness um not for everyone you know you need to sort of like uh, really sit down and get into it or you can just play it and it can just go in, in the background of your life but i wouldn't recommend that i would recommend diving into this record and all of the records because they are one of the best mo more fascinating contemporary bands i would say My favorite record of 2023, the album that I listened the most to, is The Veils Out of the Void Came Love. Veils is uh, also one of those bands that is mostly a singer, and he has some different, different people with him. Uh, Finn Andrews, son of Barry Andrews, that was in XTC. Um, it's their sixth album. And I've been, I wouldn't say obsessed with them, but I've been a massive fan since I heard Nox Vomica for the first time. And uh, it keeps putting out consistently good records. And it's been a good um, seven years since their last album, Total, Total Depravity. Um, it's a double album, sprawling. There's a lot of stuff to unpack here. Um, sometimes it's uh, slightly violent and upbeat. And... A lot of times it's these beautiful piano driven songs. Um, Fernando's voice is wonderful. Um, songs like No Limit of Stars, Someday My Love Will Come, or some of the, uh, some of the best songs I've heard this year. Um, it's kind of like a, like a softer version of, of, of Nick Cave, or you know, there's a touch of Tom Waits into it, but um, yeah. I don't even know what to say. I, I, this record is wonderful. Um, I couldn't recommend it. I mean, yeah, it's my favorite record of the year. My first heard it, I was like, yeah, it's fine. And then I kept listening to it and it's, I can't get enough of it. The veil is uh, just fantastic. Um, so please check it out. And there you have it, 10 albums that I loved. So much good music of 2023. What was your favorite album of the year? Leave your comment in the comments. Uh, what album judged on what I listened to did I miss this year? Um, yeah. Happy holidays, everyone. And I will see you in two weeks where you will find out the best punk and hardcore records of 2023. Until then, stay well, my friends.